Okay, so this is where we had left things uh, at last, and now we are going to focus uh, on uh, how to create uh, texture on these uh, pieces that are uh, broken. Um, okay, so all these pieces that you see here, they are all in a um, in a group here. It's called the fragment group, and you can see them all in there. Um, so I'm going to just select this. Uh, I'm not sure if you really need to select it when you are texturing, but uh, um, just to be comfortable, I'm going to select that. Now the very first frame, what you have is the original geometry. Uh, and as soon as you go to next frame, the original geometry is hidden. And the, um, uh, not next frame in this case, because we didn't do anything until frame 50. So now you see the original geometry is gone and it is uh, replaced with the um, uh, pieces that you see in this fragment group. So we need to um, transfer the uh, texture that existed on the geometry before it got fractured onto these pieces in a way that they don't move. So what I mean is that this texture should look continuous from frame to frame as we go from the original geometry to the um, to the pieces and uh, fracture has a uh, very nice uh, workflow around that um, if you go to shading and texturing um, you have several choices here but what you are basically trying to do is propagate shader from the original geometry into the pieces so you just say turn it on it's on by default and as soon as you say okay I want you to pay attention on this roof it will take a few seconds to take the texture from the original geometry and put on all these pieces in a way that uh, it will be continuous. Okay, so now you can see, um, as I deselect the, uh, the roof, now you can see that the texture is applied to all these pieces in a way that it is flowing continuously as if it was already there. So if you look at the frame before that and frame after that you see that the texture is not really moving it's it's right there and then when the pieces are actually breaking all the texture uh, parts are um, going with the um, with the pieces as they're flying the thing that is left here is if you go very close because this is a very uh, thin um, sheet of uh, wood in, in our case um, if you go very close to these pieces, uh, let me focus on this one. What you see is um, the interior faces don't have any shader because we haven't really selected a shader to be applied to the interior faces and therefore it is transfer transparent right now. Um, again, there is a workflow inside of Fracture to, um, to take care of that. Um, we'll go to input and go to the geometry and in their geometry you have at towards the bottom uh, shading for the interior texture uh, interior faces now um, in this case I haven't really set a separate uh, material for the interior faces uh, you can obviously do if it was a concrete that we will do in, in case of the concrete what do you see inside the concrete and you can actually set up the uh, whole shading network for um, for that but for now what I'm going to do is bring my hyper shade in here and choose one of the um, one of the shaders so the one that we have for the roof is um, let's see this is the uh, this is the material that we have used for um, for roof so I'm going to use the uh, the wall material which is a lighter version so you can see the contrast um, I'm going to use this uh, wall material as the in interior uh, face material so all you have to do is this middle mouse click that material and drag it onto this uh, interior shader window and then let go and now it is connected now what you will see as soon as we run the texture workflow again is the interior faces will be all textured so let's do that let's go over to fracture menu set here and um, without changing anything we'll run it again um, yeah I guess we do need to have the um, the pieces selected okay so let's go again into the um, the shading and then 
run it and you will see that the interior faces this time will be all shaded with the uh, material that we provided there it is so um, so now you have a complete solid um, geometry with all faces um, uh, covered so you, you can see the difference here the outside is a little darker because that's what we have selected for the uh, for the roof and the inside is a little lighter which I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, you know this thing is happening right so now if I go out and run the uh, the simulation Th we are still in takes right so we, we haven't really changed anything in uh, live simulation live simulation is off right now we are running the uh, the take so if I continue to play here you will see as the pieces are flying and and I just want to have enough fi pieces in the uh, in the shot so that you can see the difference um, as you come closer you see that uh, um, the the interior face here is lighter um, than the um, than the exterior face um, and again you know this uh, may not be very appealing at this stage but uh, as soon as we go into the concrete and um, do all sorts of things to concrete meaning that we we displace the interior faces to make them rough you know then what is outside then you will see um, you know how helpful this uh, workflow is inside of uh, fracture all right, so the other thing that I want uh, with this uh, piece is uh, going up is some sort of a dust particles going also with them. So in the events, um, there is a, um, an event that you can create, which is emission, uh, emit particles on break. So here, um, uh, I'm going to restrict my particles to takes. You can also do it to live sim or live sim and takes but we already have created the final take so I'll use that uh, we don't have any particles in our scene so I'm going to ask fracture to create new particles and you have option to choose either end particles or particles and I'm gonna go with particles for now and hit create now what will happen as soon as I go back and replay is you will see that the particles are created uh, and I've given them given the particles um, in general yellow color so you can see it better but they are created from everywhere and they're all over the place so we need to control this a um, a little okay so um, what we are going to do is a um, couple of things one we want particles to only emit from the areas of the broken roof so uh, we need to add a filter and this will be a data filter and we are going to um, choose um, from data filter active and mark it one so that when um, our pieces are active only then uh, particles will emit so let's see how that plays out so now you can see that the particles are only coming from the areas that are active right now particles are going all over the place and we need to control that a little bit but let's just first increase the number of particles to 1000 and I want particles to emit from interior faces so that's fine the inherit factor I'm going to change it to negative 2.1 so that they can follow the um, the pieces that are going around much closely all right so now you can see that uh, we have a little bit of control over how the particles are now you will see later when the pieces actually come towards the ground the particles stop emitting and we don't want that and that's because this duration filter is set to one if I change it to something like five you will see that uh, particles will continue to emit from the uh, interior faces until much later in the timeline than uh, when the uh, when the pieces are just about to fall from here okay so now we have that part covered these particles are kind of annoyingly staying forever and, and I'm going to actually have different particles that will stay for a longer period of time because they will represent the uh, the smoke that is coming from the um, or the dust that is just uh, going to stay in the environment but for this simulation I want these particles to just continue to trail basically closely to the uh, to the pieces okay so um, that is just a normal workflow inside of Maya 
Uh, if you go to the shape node here, it says live forever for particles and I'm going to change it to a random range of 0 0.1 and 0 0.25 and let's go back and then play. Alright, so now we have a little bit more control. The particles are not continuously coming out, but they are now dying much quicker and uh, you can see the effect is that they're trailing the uh, the objects that are falling down. Now you still see that the particles continue to emit when these pieces have come to a full rest and that's something that I don't want. I want the particles to stop emitting when these pieces have come to rest and that means that I need to add another filter here, a data filter and in this data filter I'm going to choose um, velocity and I'll say if the velocity is higher than or equal to a number then the particle should emit otherwise they should not emit so if I say value of 5 here 5 and 5 and rerun the simulation you will see that the particles will start to emit when the uh, pieces go up because right now the velocity is uh, way higher than uh, than 5 and when they come down and they calm down you will see that the particles will not emit after they hit the ground and they are resting there for a while. So this way I can uh, control the particles that are coming from the pieces. Now as I said earlier there will be other particles that I will include here because when the uh, destruction of this nature takes place there will be some particles that will stay in the atmosphere um, such as dust that will just uh, slowly gradually go up um, or go in some other direction because of the uh, wind. Let's go and add a turbulence here and give the um, attenuation of 0 0.1 and magnitude of 50 so here particles are coming out and they have some form of turbulence here that you can see as they are generated and uh, when they fall down you also see some turbulence, a little bit of turbulence which is I think fine. Now I'm going to increase the, uh, the count of the particles here even further so let's say 2500 yep so this is the effect that uh, I'm going for. Um, I'll stop this video here and uh, I'll do the same for all other pieces um, that we have in the uh, in the barn and then we'll combine them together in uh, fusion but also before we do that I'll um, have the, um, the pieces broken here uh, separately um, and also have um, the, uh, the model work done on this uh, driller because as I indicated earlier the driller base model here is good for the animation that we are trying to build here but in the final render I would like much more detailed version of uh, driller and also um, I'll have to um, have a couple of vehicles here that will interact with the um, in, uh, animated uh, character here so uh, we'll have to uh, build them and I'll do that offline because there's nothing interesting about building a, um, a truck or a vehicle. There are tons of uh, tutorials online. Once they are done, um, I'll bring them in here and then we'll um, also go to ZBrush to uh, create the, uh, the damage and then uh, use the um, uh, animation workflow inside of Maya to uh, transform from a normal looking geometry into a geometry that has sustained the damage that will be coming up in the next videos. Thanks a lot.